tell a story of an experience I had as a nursing supervisor, one that taught all of us on this ward a great deal about what nursing is and what it can be. It begins one sunny day at 7 a.m. Time for morning report. Well, good morning. Good morning, morning, everybody. What a lively looking group. You better get into morning report. I have to go to another ward. It looks like it's going to be some day. The head nurse is a recognized authority on ward management in this 400-bed, tax-supported general hospital. Her relations with staff are excellent. This ward has the lowest staff turnover in the hospital. The doctors say she knows as much as anybody can about observing and assessing neurological symptoms. She keeps the complicated equipment running like top. She's the model head nurse, graduate of an accredited diploma school of nursing. She plays a key role in this story. This is the night nurse. Good morning. Good morning. You all look nice and rested. I've never had such a night. Every bed is full, and you're short of practical today. Let me tell you just a little bit about what happened last night, and then I'll give you the details about the cases. First, there was three admissions, a head injury, auto crash at 12.30. At 1.10, one of the characters from Skid Row found on the street convulsing, he then sleeping it off. A stat admission at 2.30, girl, she's 19, barbiturate overdose fight with her boyfriend. Well, that's all 30 of them. You know, it really bugs me when I'm so busy, I can't give these patients the care they really need. I haven't even finished my charting yet. Well, why don't you finish it up and go get some sleep? Don't worry. We'll pick up the pieces. It'll be better tonight. It had been a hard night, all right, but nothing to the eight months trial we were all about to enter. This is going to be a very busy day. Flo and Jerry, remember we have six patients going down for x-ray this morning. Flo, since Mrs. Murphy isn't here, I'll have to get help from the supervisor for you. And Jerry, remember the doctors are making rounds on your side at 10. Please have your sickest patients done first. Bernie, you'll have to help on both sides today. I'm going down to see the girl on the artificial kidney. After seven years as supervisor here, I'm just back with a new master's degree. It's good to be in the wards again. Pretty little thing, isn't she? You've had quite a night. Yeah, I'm beat. Well, how was your weekend? Sure, I'm glad you're back. I don't know why it is, but things seem to get in a mess around here when you're off. We are quite short today. We could use some help. I've already been working on it. They're mighty short-staffed all over the house. Say, when are we going to get some more of those pretty student nurses around here to liven things up a little? Is that all you can think of with all this going on? Well, it just so happens you're going to have some coming Monday, and I want them treated gently. After all, they have other things to learn besides the doctor-nurse relationship. Well, that's a typical old maid's remark. I was wondering if you could discharge Mr. Peters. We have no bed. And if we would get a new admission, I don't know what we'd do. Debbie South, Mrs. Bryant, ward clerk. Thank you. A new admission's on the way up. I'd better tell Mrs. Jenkins. Well, that's all we need. And here the story really begins. Emma Reynolds, partially paralyzed, difficulty in breathing, coming with her husband, and what must be everything she owns onto a ward that already is straining at the seams. Look at all that stuff. 
I'll call the store room and get a bed, but we're going to have to put her in the hall. I hope we can make her comfortable. She's going to have to get rid of some of that junk. From such stuff, this story is made. It is two busy hours later. Send up that so far. Flo, Dr. James wants to do a spinal tap on Mr. Kelly. He'll be here in 15 minutes. Would you please call Dr. Matthews? Mrs. Wilson's blood pressure has dropped. Jerry, they're sending out a foster frame for Mr. Taylor very soon. Uh, we can do that and draw sheets. I'll order them. Thanks for telling uh, me. Maxine, I've tried to beg bar and steal some help, and there just isn't today. How's that new patient making out? She's had the whole staff jumping. They're just about ready to crawl the walls. I know it's not very pleasant to be out there in the hall and not have a room, but we have a lot sicker patients, and they're not complaining. We'll try and move her into the ward this afternoon. I'll tell her. Mr. and Mrs. Reynolds, I'm Miss Little, the nursing supervisor, and I'm real glad to know both of you. I'm sure you're not too comfortable out here in the hall, but we'll have you in one of the wards real soon. A ward? She needs a private room. She's been sick for nine months. You make them find me a room, John. Well, we just don't have a private room available. We'll look after her. Don't you worry. Where are you folks from? We're from West River. She was in the hospital there. Nurse, can you rub my arm? <laughs> I thought at first it was the flu. The doctors did. My neck, too, and that pillow's bumpy. Then she couldn't move her arms or legs very good, and they thought it was polio. We had her home for four months, and we had a nurse that really knew how to take care of her. We took her to a re rehabilitation center at Dawson River, and the doctor said that she wasn't getting any better, so that we'd have to have her hospitalized to find out what was wrong with her. John, take the covers off of my toes. Can't somebody get me a fresh drink of water? I'd just like a, somebody to pay a little attention. I hope they can do something here. Mr. Reynolds, we have the best specialist. Don't you worry. I asked him for some, to bring her some fresh water, and they wouldn't do it. They just said to get her things out of the hospital. Mr. Reynolds, we have no place for all these things in the room. But they're my things. I need them. I'll bring you some fresh water and be right back. I am, I'm going to leave you now to get a hotel room before it gets dark. Don't you worry. They said everything's going to be all right. trying to get you. They say it's urgent. Hey, you forgot your parcels. couldn't get her breath all of a sudden. Yeah. Mr. Reynolds, we had to give your wife a tracheotomy, an opening into her windpipe there so she could breathe. But she's doing very well. Why? I've only been gone a little while. Sure. I'll take care of you, Emma. See, you're all right. 